This is a complete live stream coming directly from these cameras. Now I'm pretty excited about this. Right here inside this small compact box, we have an all-in-one streaming kit setup. It basically replaces your camera, microphone, switcher, you name it. Everything you need to stream is built into this small form factor. And even better, it's completely wireless with up to eight hours of battery life on the camera and nine and a half hours of battery life on the wireless microphone. Now, although that already sounds very cool, my favorite feature about this is that you can live stream with up to three different cameras wirelessly without needing anybody to help you because it automatically switch between each angle and allow you to have a more interesting and professional live stream without having to have a bunch of people on your crew. This is the eMeet Stream Cam 1 wireless live streaming camera that allows you to stream like a pro with one click completely wirelessly in up to 1080p resolution. And the good thing about it is you can actually record your live stream to your phone or micro SD card so you can have the footage ready later in case you want to edit it down or post it to something else. So as you can see, I do have two eMeet Stream Cam 1 cameras along with two professional floor tripods for more versatile situations. First things first, let's actually take a look at this tripod. It's supposed to be a professional floor tripod, so let's see how professional it actually is. Okay, we do have a very nice carrying case with Emi branding on it. Very nice so far. All right, that's some good weight to it. Inside the box, we have an Allen wrench along with some instructions. All right, we have some soft touch materials right here, metal build. Things are very smooth. All right, very good quality metal 360 degree rotating head. You can have it facing straight down, facing up, pretty much anywhere you want. Everything's working very smoothly, feels good, very strong. I will say this tripod does pass my qualifications. It looks like a very good tripod. You can do whatever you need with it. And it's it's kind of funny actually, considering how small these all-in-one cameras are. And we have this huge tripod here. They also do have tabletop tripods if you want, but I feel like these are the better options. So you can use them anywhere in case you don't have a table. Although obviously you will want to get some for the table as well, depending on your situation. Now moving back onto the eMeet Stream Cam 1, very, very nice packaging, the red dot winner for 2023. Like I said, we're looking at eight hours of battery life for easy live streaming, streaming stunning 1080p HD resolution with crisp detailed imaging, pick up voice stably no matter how far or near because the wireless microphone that attaches magnetically to the top of the camera can function up to 10 meters away from the camera. So you should be good to go no matter what. It operates on multiple networks, whether it's Wi-Fi 2.4 or 5 gigahertz along with Ethernet via USB. We also do have two built-in microphones with 48 kilohertz sampling rate to transmit voice in stunning clarity and definition, and it connects via USB-C to your computer as a webcam. Now, as far as the capabilities of this camera goes, it works with Android, iOS, and Windows as of right now. In the future, they do plan to release it for Mac OS and Linux as well. We're looking at true wireless live streaming with no cable bothering. eMeet Stream app makes live streaming easier than ever. One click stream to multiple platforms at the same time in real time. That's nice that it makes it very easy to stream to multiple platforms at the same time so you don't have to work with a bunch of third-party stuff. Everything's just right here. So with all that being said, let's get inside this box and see what we got. All right, nice to see so far. A nice hard shell carrying case for everything. Inside the box, we have a user manual, two-year limited warranty, as well as some stickers. I guess you can label what camera is which or whatever you want to do with the stickers, really. Now let's get inside this nice hard shell case here. Wow, okay. So the camera is a bit bigger than I was expecting, but it is nice to see because of everything that is inside. We also do have a USB-C to USB-C cable along with a USB-A adapter. Of course, we do have a dead cat to cover up the microphone in case you're in a windy area, as well as the wireless microphone that attaches magnetically to the top of the camera unless you want to clip it onto your shirt. So like I was saying, the microphone does clip right onto the top of the camera with a magnet. Now it's not the strongest magnet ever, but because this camera is going to be sitting on a tripod, it's not a huge deal. It's definitely going to be secure for that. Down the bottom, we do have the quarter thread mount to put on the tripod. Now coming over here to the front, we do have our f2.0 three millimeter lens that records in full 1080p resolution. Down on the bottom, we have a grill as well. Now over here on the back, we do have easy access to the micro SD card slot, a 3.5 millimeter microphone jack, as well as the USB-C charging port. And of course, we also have easy access to a rubberized power button. So, I mean, so far, this camera is actually very cool. It has good build quality, and I really like how we have a microphone built into the camera, a microphone on top that connects wirelessly as well as a microphone jack so no matter what kind of microphone you want to use they got you covered all right so now let's get this powered on 
All right, battery indicators over here on the back. We do have five of them, nice to see. Over on the front, we also do have an LED indicator light. It's now flashing green, so that means we're ready to connect. As you can see, we do have 80% battery right out of the box, which is very nice. So next up, we're gonna open up the eStream app so we can get everything set up. It's gonna instantly start searching for our cameras. As you can see, we do have two cameras available, 80 and 90% battery indicators. We're gonna tap on both of them and connect them to our network. So we have two different ways to connect these cameras to the internet, either via Wi-Fi or you can use the eMeet camera hotspot and cellular connection from your phone. So I'm actually planning to use these more wirelessly out and about. So I'm actually gonna try to do it with the camera hotspot and cellular from my phone. So now I'm gonna tap on next. Now I'm supposed to select a camera as a something. I'm not sure, it's cut off a little bit. I'll just leave it on the first one. And now we can make the password for the hotspot. It looks like it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight by default. Country code, I'm gonna set that to United States. And now it's configuring the hotspot with the camera. All right, this one does have a solid green light, so it looks like this one is gonna be our main camera with the hotspot. Camera is joining to the hotspot. And we're successful, okay, so now we're gonna connect. Eastream needs to have a temporary WAN, okay. So let's connect to the Wi-Fi hotspot being emitted by the camera. All right, and it looks like both cameras are connected. There is a bit of latency on this preview right here. I'm noticing that. All right, yeah, okay. But we can see both cameras already. Very, very nice. Quality does look pretty good so far. Let me actually just prop this camera up right here. It can see me, okay. So far looking very nice. So now inside the app, we actually do have a few different options here. As you can see, it is a bit delayed as far as the connection goes. So it is a bit hard to, you know, look at myself talking when it's about two seconds off. Now over here in the middle, we do have some options for controlling the stream. The first one is the sounds. If we tap on that, it'll mute the sound for the stream. Tap it again, it'll unmute everything. The next one right here, we can actually have auto switch enabled, so it'll automatically switch between cameras depending on what's going on. If you tap on it again, auto switch is disabled and you have to manually switch between the cameras by tapping on them, which is also pretty cool if you wanna do that. But I'm gonna turn auto switch on and we'll see if it actually switches as we're doing this. Now the next up, we actually have the recording button, so if you wanna record your stream to your phone or the SD card in your camera, it'll automatically do it. You can set the video quality between 360p and 1080p, and you can choose to record it locally or to the SD card and tap on start recording, and instantly it starts recording just like so, and as you switch between cameras, it'll also record that. Then we could tap stop, and it'll save the footage to our library. So now if we go to our library, we can see the footage here. And as you can see, the camera did switch. Now back inside the app, we do have this big button here to go live, but we'll get to that in a second. Down here on the bottom, we actually have materials. So you can actually add materials to your stream, whether you wanna put images, transitions, covers, overlaps, text. You can put your logo, a watermark, a small image, picture in picture if you wanna have both cameras on the screen at the same time. You can do a lot of stuff here. So let's do picture in picture real quick. We can choose the position and now we can tap on what corner we want it on. So let's say we put on the top left. All right, we're gonna confirm it. And now we're gonna tap on it. And as you can see, it pops up and goes away depending on if we want it. Very, very cool. Oh, and right there, it automatically switched cameras. That was, that was actually nice the way it did that. Wow, did not expect that to happen. Next up, we do have the audio tab. So we can see the audio coming from each camera and the audio combined between both of them. We can of course increase the gain if we want to in case things are quiet. We also have a little gear icon here. We can tap on that and we can choose which microphone we wanna use, whether it's the built-in microphone, the wireless microphone or the corded microphone. And then finally we have settings. So right here we have our SD card settings, auto director, so we can have it unify the playback time or individualize the playback time. I'm gonna just leave it unified. Playback time is at 30 seconds. You can go all the way down to three seconds or 600 seconds. Next up we do have zoom and move. So the default zoom is set at 2X. The zoom transition time is one second and the move transition time is one second as well, but you can change that to your liking. Next up, we have input video quality. So right here, you can choose between 360p all the way up to 1080p. Of course, I want it to be as good quality as possible. And then we also have video source latency. You can change between low, standard, and high. Of course, I'm gonna leave that to low. So as you can see, all the settings are easy to use and very self-explanatory. Now, the one thing I am noticing, it's not really using AI to switch between the camera angles. It's more using a timer, which uh, it's a, I'm a little bit disappointed. I thought I was gonna change it based on, oh, if there's more stuff going on on this camera, it's gonna switch to this one. And if there's more stuff going on this one, it's gonna switch to this one when I start talking or something. But it looks like when you go to the settings, go to auto director, you choose the amount of time that you want it to switch between it. So I did it at three seconds. So every three seconds, it'll switch between cameras. 
Now, if we go to individualize, you can set the playback time individually, so it'll show each camera for a certain amount of time before it switches to the other one. So, I mean, you can customize it, but uh, I guess it's better than nothing, but I was hoping it would be a little bit smarter and change it on the fly by itself, but you do have to set it like this. So it might be better to switch it yourself for the most part, depending on what you're doing. Maybe if you're cooking and you want it to switch back and forth because your hands are dirty, then obviously you'll set auto director on. But if you're just sitting here, you can just have your phone down at the table and just easily tap on which one you want it to switch to and just do it manually. You know, depending on your use case. So I'm gonna set it back to about 30 seconds and we'll just let it do it from there. We can obviously switch between them manually while it's in auto mode as well if we want to. So, I mean, very simple process to set everything up. Latency, as you can see, it's roughly two to three seconds. But that's all fine and dandy. We need to do a live stream, so we're gonna tap on live. Now we can set our video quality. Of course, I want to do 1080p. We can add a platform. So by default, we have Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. We also have RTMP options. We can choose any of these. And we can also choose a custom one in case it's not there and you have all the information. All right, so right here, I put my RTMP information for YouTube with my stream key and the URL, as well as the title for the stream. We're gonna tap on save. And as you can see down here at the bottom, we do have our option to stream. So the cool thing is you can put multiple different streaming services so it'll stream to all of them at the same time. Right now I'm just using one. I'm gonna enable recording and we're gonna tap live. And now it should pop up and there it goes. We are currently live on YouTube. Very, very cool. It is also recording to our internal storage on our phone. And I don't, very nice. So let's see, it looks like everything's working pretty smoothly. So it looks like we have an excellent connection here. And so as you can see, we are currently live. I'm gonna actually zoom in on the screen so you can see what's going on. Just like that, you can see that we are streaming live. Let's actually go here, refresh. And there we go. This is a complete live stream coming directly from these cameras. Very, very cool. I can switch between everything. I can show off this little dead cat and I can switch over to that camera. As you can see, we are live streaming right now at 1080p on YouTube. I can manually switch between the camera angles and see what's going on on each different angle. Now, this is working very well, very smooth, very nice. I like that I can have multiple cameras just wirelessly through my phone live streaming. It's way better than having a bunch of wires and having to have a whole stream box right here to switch between angles. This is actually very, very nice. Now, as far as the video quality goes, you are currently looking live at the live stream coming from the eMeet camera directly, the microphone as well. Let me actually take the microphone off. I'm gonna clip it onto my shirt. Hopefully you can hear me. Put it on right there. And now this is how good the quality is as far as this camera goes. Let's get really close to my eye, see if we can see. If we can see. Okay, looking pretty good. Doesn't look like it's super in focus when you get this close, but it's not bad. All right, so that's what it looks like. Let me switch over to this camera. Hey, how you guys doing? How you doing? Okay, now we're back over to this front camera. And overall, I mean, very nice system here, being that it's all in one wireless and live streaming, switching between different angles. Like, it's very impressive. And then once you're done streaming, you can easily just tap on stop. It'll confirm and stop, and it'll save the footage to your library. All right, so what I will say about the eMeet Stream Cam 1, it's a very nice system with everything built in one. As you can see, no wires whatsoever unless you need to charge it up. It goes on to tripods, connects to your phone, connects to Wi-Fi, does everything you need it to do. Now, as far as the quality of this camera itself goes, it's, you know, it's good quality. It's not amazing quality. So if you're live streaming with DSLRs, mirrorless cameras, a bunch of crazy studio stuff, it's probably not gonna replace that as far as the quality. But if you just want a good quality webcam live streaming setup without all the extra equipment, this will definitely satisfy your needs. It's basically a webcam with all the extra features built right in, and it does a good job with all of them. Live streaming is very simple to get set up. Just connect to Wi-Fi or through your phone's network, put in all your information for the platforms you wanna stream on, and you're good to go in about a minute or so. Now, the one thing that I was disappointed about was the auto director feature you basically just set a time frame for it to switch between cameras I was hoping it would be a more automatic thing like hey you're talking over here looking at this camera we'll switch to this one you're moving around a lot on this camera showing a product we'll switch to this one and 
you know, keep switching back and forth. But you basically just set a timer in 30 seconds. Okay, let's switch to that one. 15 seconds, we'll switch back. 30 seconds, we'll go over there. Yada, yada, yada. But remember, the cool thing is within the app, you can add different things like text effects, images, transitions, all that stuff to make your live stream that more entertaining. So it's a very good setup if you want to stream with no wires and actually have a lot of customization with it. Overall, very nice.